Hey, it's Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here with a tip on how to use the RT color balance effect, which is part of the Ripple Tools collection for Final Cut Pro 10. So here we are in Final Cut Pro 10. Here we are in the Titles browser in the Ripple Tools collection where we have uh, 12 different tools. And the focus of this short video is on RT color balance. So I'm gonna mark a clip that I wanna apply it to. I'll hit X, select RT color balance, press Q. And now that uh, title effect is uh, matching that clip exactly. So I'll select it and we'll take a trip up to the title inspector. Now, uh, this is basically an alternative to using the color board that's built into Final Cut Pro for color correction. Color board's great, uh, and this is just another way that you can do color correction. And it really uses the traditional color wheel approach to doing so. So in the inspector, you can see first we have some show uh, quick tips that you can enable just to get some information that you can reference. Uh, it wants, so you don't have to go back to the video. You've got really some information here. I'll turn that off. And then the key part of this is these three controls, shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you're able to color correct the shadows, midtones, and highlights of your clip independently, although there's certainly some overlap. And it works like this. Each of these has a color swatch. You could click the pop-up menu to sample a color, but really the best thing to do is click directly on the color swatch. I'll start with the shadows. Oh, and by the way, before I get started, often it can be helpful to have the scopes be active while you're doing this. So I'll go to Window, I'll go to Viewer Display, and choose Show Video Scopes. And in particular, I'm gonna bring up the waveform because I wanna look at the luminance values for this clip. And what I'm going for here is this is a, you know, sort of heavily to blue tinted clip because it's underwater here and I want to do some correction on it. But I also wanna look at the overall luminance range as well. We can see that uh, there's nothing really completely black in here, although it has some decent highlights, but uh, it could use a little expansion of the luma range. So what I'm gonna do is start with shadows. I'll click the uh, swatch here and I'll get the OS 10 color picker. Now there's many different ways you can choose colors in the color picker. I like to use the color wheel, especially if you're used to doing uh, color correction, perhaps in Legacy Final Cut Pro with the uh, three-way, color corrector three-way. This should look pretty familiar. Instead of a slider underneath the wheel, there's a slider next to it. Basically the slider on the right here controls luminance for the shadows, and then you can control hue and saturation in the color wheel. So I'll address luminance first, and I'm just gonna drag this down, and you can watch the waveform come down as we uh, you know, kind of bring those shadows down and make them a little, a little blacker. And then while I'm here, I also might wanna just add a little bit of um, yellow red in there. You can see I can go way too far, but I'm just gonna make warm this up a little bit by dragging over, and I'm basically using the image itself as a guide. Also, if you have multiple monitors, you can throw everything here onto a second monitor and look at it very large. Uh, from there, I'll go to the midtones, and um, the midtones. This is basically a gamma slider here, so I could kind of brighten it up. It's not bad where it is. I might just warm things up a little bit there in the midtones, and then I'll go to the highlights. And here, maybe I'll pump them up just a little bit, and also warm things up a little bit. And how you actually color correct is very subjective and up to you and your own goals. But I just wanted to uh, kind of warm this whole thing up a little bit, so. Uh, that's one approach. I've got that done. And that's really the extent of the key components of the uh, RT color balance effect. Now, from there, uh, basically, you can choose to dial back the overall effect by using the mix slider. So I can pull it all the way out or add it back in. Or, of course, I could keyframe this to animate it over time. And then, really, the rest of the controls here have to do with limiting the color correction to a specific area. In other words, doing um, really secondary color correction, color correcting part of the image by using a mask. Uh, before I get there, I might just switch back over to the vector scope to check my luminance, uh, my, I'm sorry, my saturation. And my overall saturation is quite high here. So I might want to dial that down. Uh, you really need to go into each of these. And th if you want to pull saturation down, you're basically moving towards the center of the wheel and you can see which one affects it the most. I suspect it's going to be in the highlights. There, pull that down a little bit in there. You can also use this in combination with the um, overall color corrector. So I could select the clip itself, go to the correction here, and go to saturation, and maybe just pull overall saturation down uh, within the Final Cut color board. So you can really combine these uh, both to get a result.
Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to hide those scopes, viewer display, hide video scopes, so we can get a larger image back. And then in terms of limiting the color balance uh, effect to a specific area, I can choose to enable the mask by hitting the checkbox, and we get a rectangular mask that the color correction is inside of, and we also get an on-screen control for changing the position of the mask. You'll notice as I drag this, the values are also changing over here from mask position. So you can change those values by dragging or entering values, and you can keyframe by setting keyframes to make this mask move over time. This mask looks and acts very much like the mask in a few of the other tools in here. So we can uh, reduce the scale. I'll bring it down. I basically, I'm going to color correct this little fish here. I'll bring it down. I'm going to increase the roundness. And instead of using the slider that only goes to 50, I'll drag on the value fields. So I can make it much rounder. And then I'll also to add some feather. And then from there, maybe I'll bring the scale down a little bit more and add a lot more feather. I'm also dragging in the value field because that way I can go much higher than the slider will allow me and maybe scale that down a little bit. So uh, that's basically how you can use the mask. And then if you want to keyframe it, we can set keyframes, for instance, for position, scale, maybe rotation, uh, and, and move in time. I'll move forward a little bit and then move the mask. Move forward a little bit more and move the mask. And of course, we would need to then modify it a little bit there. But if I now play over that part, you can see the mask moves with the fish and we can create a rough mask uh, around a color corrected portion of the frame. And those are the key components of using RT Color Balance. So feel free to combine it with the color board in Final Cut Pro just as another uh, tool in your tool set for doing color correction. Thanks for watching.